Hi everyone, it's Monica, and welcome back to TaylorMade Cards for You. Well, today I'm here to share with you a really easy uh, journal book that you can create the size of a card. Now, this card, or I should say journal book, measures 5.5 by 4.25, which is basically the size of an A2 card. But what's really fun about it is it opens up like an accordion. So when you open it, you're not going to really have any binding on the side. So you can either display it on a counterpiece or you could simply use it like a card or a little journal book. Now I got a hold of this paper from one of the, uh, one of the thrift shops here in town in Prescott. And when I first got it, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it. And I've had it for a few months. But then I came up with this design, and now I think I'm going to have to make several of these little books. So let me go ahead and share with you what I did here. This is basically a book where you can hold ephemera, and I turned it into a Valentine's Day book using some of my little uh, cabinet cards. And as you can see, these little uh, kids are just so cute. Um, I have first Valentine, I have first friend, I have first flowers, which is here in this little pocket. And then on the back, um, I have First Love. So I had four pages, which was perfect for these little Valentines because I could easily stick them in the pockets or behind a little tuck like I did for this heart. Now I know not everybody has access to that long sheet, uh, kind of like what I was showing to create this exactly. So what I wanted to do today is to create a little variation. Uh, and this is something that you can do with your uh, eight and a half by 11 sheet pieces of paper. And we're gonna be working with the heavier cardstock, the cardstock that you use that uh, is used for the base of your cards. So this is a really easy design. It's just a little bit different, um, but somewhat similar. So instead of it opening it up as an accordion, what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue our cards together so it'll be a, a little book. Um, and that way you can uh, create this using paper that you have on hand. And then at the end of the video, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a little trick on how you can actually create an accordion uh, type of book uh, with by some 12 by 12 pieces of paper. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get out your white cardstock and you're going to want to cut it into A2 size. So basically it's going to be cut right in half at five and a half and then you're going to score it at four and a quarter. And then once you do that, you're going to want a cut, to cut a quarter of an inch off of the top and off of the side because you want your inside pages to be four inches by 5.25. And there's a reason for this because we're going to create the cover to be the size of your A2 card. So once you have your uh, cardstock trimmed, go ahead and add some glue. And I like to use liquid glue because it gives me some movement time and you're going to glue your card pieces together. Now you wanna make sure that these are somewhat even, um, but if it's a little bit uneven, you can always just trim it a bit with a pair of scissors. And then what I like to do when I'm working with glue that needs a little bit of drying time, I like to grab my binding clips uh, that I got at the office store, and I just like to bind my paper to give it a little bit more drying time. All right, so what's really nice about this design is you can add as many pages as you want. So I'm just using three cards and gluing those together, and that will give me four pages. But if you wanted to make it a little bit thicker, you certainly could because this design will work uh, with several pages. You just have to follow the same process. And then once I have all of my pages glued together, then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my uh, clips again, and I'm gonna uh, clip all of the pages together and I'm going to put that aside to dry and this will give me some time to work on the cover. Now as I indicated you're going to want to use a thicker cardstock so if you're just using um, regular thin cardstock uh, or paper it's probably not going to work for you because this is essentially the base of your book. So if you have some heavier cardstock and what I'm working with is a hundred pound cardstock that's going to be your best choice. 
Okay, so when we started, we had three eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, and we cut them at half at five and a half. So uh, we glued three of those um, five and a half card bases together. Uh, so you should have a fourth one left. And what you're going to want to do is instead of scoring that at uh, four and a quarter, you're going to slice it right in half at the four and a quarter. And these are going to be the two pieces that we're going to use for the front and the back. Now, if you want to have bigger edges uh, for your front and your back, then instead of using the four and the quarter by five and a half panels, then you're going to need to go ahead and just grab another piece of paper and uh, give it another quarter of an inch. So having a half an inch on the top and half an inch on the side and that'll give you a quarter of an, inch, of an inch on each side. So once you figure out what size you wanna go with, then you're gonna wanna go ahead and get some paper and we're gonna cover this. Now, if you've ever covered journals before, uh, this is the exact same way. You're just gonna basically get your white cardstock and you're going to use some uh, designer paper to cover it and we'll go through that in just a moment here. Now you may be asking why we're not using something a little bit thicker. Well, remember this is a card journal. It's not necessarily a uh, typical journal. Um, you're gonna wanna be able to put it into a uh, envelope, maybe give it as a gift. So you don't want it to be too bulky. And that's why I don't recommend actually going with a uh, grunge board or something a little bit thicker. If you use the heavy cardstock, that should be ample enough, especially if you're gonna be covering it with some more cardstock. Okay, so using your glue, you're gonna want to add the glue to uh, one side of your cardstock. And then if you are using some print paper, figure out what you want to show. So on this particular one, um, I chose to just use the top portion. Um, there wasn't really anything specific that I wanted showing for the back, but for the front, I'm gonna be a little bit more strategic and I'm gonna make sure that life is good uh, is positioned so that way it could be the front of my card journal. And as you can see here, I'm making sure that it does fit um, and it will fit nicely. So when I do actually glue it to the back side, I'll make sure that it is within the borders of that sentiment. And then once I have it glued, I'll just set it aside a minute to dry uh, and then I will trim it. So I'll have about a half an inch on each side to be able to fold over. Now, if you wanna go a full inch just to make sure you have nice coverage, that's fine as well. Uh, just make sure if you do wanna have um, larger borders, you take that into consideration when you're choosing your cardstock. So for this particular cardstock, I started out with 12 by 12 sheet of paper and I just cut it right down the middle. Uh, so I have some nice borders on each side. Uh, and then I'll just cut off some of the excess on the top and the bottom. Now, of course, if you are being strategic light, like I am on the top here, I had to position it to make sure that the center uh, of my card had that sentiment, and that's why you see some uh, bigger border on one side rather than the other. But you just wanna make sure you have enough room to be able to fold over the paper. And then once I have the paper trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and trim up the corners as well. So as I uh, finish trimming it here with my guillotine trimmer, um, I'm gonna make sure that I, again, I have ample room to be able to fold over the paper. Now, one thing I did find when I was working up this design is when I'm covering a uh, thicker cardboard when I'm making my journals, I had a really nice edge to be able to fold over my paper. But with this thinner cardstock, um, I didn't have a lot of give on the sides. So I had to make sure when I was folding my paper, I did do it tight enough so that way it was snug against the white cardstock. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, when I'm working with a journal, I use my, uh, my bottom uh, table uh, as you know, friction here to, to bend over my paper, but I was afraid that the white cardstock would be a little bit too flimsy to do that. And then once I have my nice creases, I'll come in uh, with some scissors uh, against the corners so that way I won't have a lot of bulk when I go to start folding my paper. Now, while ordinarily I use my wet adhesive, you see me use my three-in-one uh, beacon glue all the time. For this, I would recommend using actual um, adhesive tape. And this is because if you use the wet adhesive, it's not gonna dry quick enough. 
And you should and you shouldn't have to have movement when you do this. You've already got your score lines. You already uh, can see where it's going to be folded in. So you should be easy. It should be easy enough to just add some tape and fold over your edges. Now, one thing I do when I am uh, folding over my edges I, is I like to be uh, uh, strategic about it. So I'll fold over the top and the bottom first and then the two sides. And you could do it the opposite way as well. But what I'm saying is make sure if you do one side, you do the opposite side before you start folding uh, the top and the bottom. And that way, when you have the inside of your journal, it'll just look cleaner. Now, if you've ever covered uh, journal pages before or, uh, you know, journal books before, um, typically once you do this part here where you're adding the top part of your uh, journal, then you're going to add a piece of paper to the back side. And that's because typically you would see it, right? You would open your book and you would see uh, the inside of your covers. Now, when I was working on this, I completely forgot that you're not going to see the inside. So when you get to the part where I'm going to go add the book, you're going to see that I do have some designer paper on the inside. That's absolutely not necessary. I just got a little carried away when I was um, creating my uh, page and it, I didn't stop to think that I don't need it. And that's because you're going to be taping your uh, pages to the cover. You're not going to actually use them on their own. So as you can see here, I do have some white or some designer paper on the inside, but you don't have to do that. That's completely not necessary uh, sorry for this process. And you're going to see why in a minute here. So as you see, I brought my card base uh, together and I just got some glue. And then you're going to just add the top right to those pages. And then you're going to flip it over and then just make sure that it's lined up straight. And then at this point, you probably are going to want to get your clips out again and just clip it to make sure that it, you do give it some drying time. And then after a few minutes, uh, you should be okay to take off your clips. And then you're going to do the same exact thing on the other side. You're going to add your wet adhesive and you're going to get your back panel and you're going to add it to your pages. And then at this point, you want to want to go ahead and add your clips to the entire book. And then I would recommend putting it aside for probably about 15 or 20 minutes or so. Just make sure it's good drawing time because you are going to be opening this book um, and you want to make sure that the pages will not separate. And that's really about it. I mean, at this point, uh, once your pages are, or your covers are dry, you can take your clips off and you're going to have a nice little book uh, that you can open up. Now, when you open up the pages, you're going to find that the back and the front won't necessarily lie flat uh, together, but it is a nice little uh, card book that you can decorate inside, add some pockets, uh, some ephemera, and use it as a cute little book. And what I liked about this is it's not too big, it's not too overwhelming, right? So you're not gonna necessarily wanna put a lot of bulky ephemera pieces into it, but you can certainly decorate it up and I think it would be a nice little keepsake. And as you can see, while it may not be an accordion type of a journal, it still stands up nicely. Um, and when it stands up, the pages do open. So it still would be a nice little decorative piece for a countertop or uh, a desk. Okay, so as you can see, this was pretty easy to put together, just using some eight and a half by 11 uh, inch sheets of paper. Now we're gonna get a little bit more uh, creative here. Instead of actually gluing down the pages, we're going to create our own accordion. Now I know a lot of you may not have one piece of paper that is long enough to be able to score it several times to create your own accordion. So we're gonna have to work with some 12 by 12 sheets and create our own paper long enough to be able to create an accordion style card. Okay, so you're gonna need 12 by 12 sheets of paper. And for this demonstration, I am using some black paper. Now what I found with, uh, while I, with uh, using the black paper, while I like the background of the black, I found when I was using my glue that if I had any of the glue that slipped underneath or off of the edges, it really showed up when you're using black paper. So just try to keep that in mind. Um, don't go heavy on the glue when you're decorating the pages because if it does tend to seep outside of your edges, it will, it will really show up with black paper.
Okay, so you've got your 12 by 12 sheets of paper and what you're going to do is you're going to cut them right down the middle. You're going to uh, slice them at the six inch mark. And then make sure that your paper uh, is exactly six inches. Sometimes I find when I'm working with a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, when I slice it in half, the second half isn't exactly six inches. It might just be just a little bit off. So if it is a little bit off, make sure that you do one more slice to make sure that they are exactly even. And then once you have your pages sliced, then you're going to want to get your scoreboard out and score at four inches. And this is going to be two score lines on each sheet of paper. And then uh, what I like to do to make sure that the folds will be nice and crisp is I like to score on both sides. And then once I have my score lines complete, then you're going to take your two sheets of paper and you're going to glue the edges together. Now what is different uh, about this design versus the beige sheet where it just came in one sheet is of course on one of the panels you're going to have two layers which is going to make your card a little bit heavier and a little bit thicker so that's just something you're going to want to keep in mind and when you are folding where the two pieces come together you want to make sure that it does fold easily because again this is going to be a little book you want to make sure that your fold lines do fold easily so that way the book will close. And then uh, for this, you're actually gonna need uh, another piece of paper, um, again, cut in half at six inches, and you're gonna need to glue it again on the other side. Now, for this piece, you're only gonna need two of the panels. So you're gonna have an extra panel that you're gonna want to cut off. And you might be thinking, why do I need to cut it off? Why don't I just keep it in my accordion? Well, the reason for that is your end folds need to fold like a book. So uh, you'll find here when you are doing the accordion fold, if you were to keep that last section, it folds the, it folds the wrong way. And that's why you need to actually cut it off. So now that we have everything glued together, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and accordion fold it. And then I would recommend uh, adding your clips again for maybe five minutes just to give it time to dry. So for your accordion fold, your first fold on your left is going to be towards uh, the panels. And that'll be the front page. Um, and then from there, just follow your accordion fold to go uh, forward and backward to create your pages. And then from here, it's exactly the same process to create your front page and your back page as I did uh, for the book style. So as you can see, it's not real difficult. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time and it's not as nice as having a real long panel like I did for mine, but you certainly can make it work. So as always, I'll leave a list of all the products that I've used to create these along with the links to the stores. And if you've enjoyed the video, uh, I would sure appreciate a thumbs up. Now, make sure that you hit, uh, stay tuned to the end of the video because I have some examples of the finished journals after I've decorated them. And the last journal, uh, which is the black accordion one, I'm going to go ahead and give it away to one of my viewers. So if, you've, uh, want, if you want to be entered into a drawing to win this little journal that I decorate, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know uh, which journal you prefer, if you like the book style or if you like the accordion style. And I'll let the video run for about a week and then I'll come back with an, an announcement for the winner. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, don't forget, forget to hit my subscribe button before you head out. And uh, also don't forget to hit the little bell because the little bell will notify you when I do have new videos loaded. Now, I think I love this design and I think I'm going to be obsessed with it for uh, at least a few months this year. So I will have some more journals in my shop. And if you are interested in any of these, uh, they will be available for you. And hopefully you've enjoyed them as well. And you'll give these a try. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for stopping by. And don't forget to hang around for the photos. And we'll see you again next time.